Having listened, the basic question on the minds of a lot of people, more than I would see with me, is outside of detailing the history of this individual, you in the NDC have not provided any evidence to substantiate the claim of a ploy to rig. You say his house is a storehouse for weapons, a military uniform, and some other things. There's nothing in terms of evidence that has been presented. People will make the argument simply that you're just making wild allegations against the person of a man who's risen through the ranks. Where's the evidence to back all of the Well, the accounts have an adage that goes, uh, that says that the Oreo Krano, Okaso Oberio Kotoa, Yenine Chinye. To wait, the man who chews Kalabash. If he says that he will chew a crap, you, you, you don't have to argue with him because <laughs> there isn't much of a difference between a crab and a calabash. Mm -hmm. We have shown you the track record of the man we are talking about, Brigadier General Lopuku. You all saw what happened at Ayawaso West Wagon. It was the first time in the history of Ghana that we saw so-called national security operatives wearing masks, armed to, to the teeth with sophisticated weapons, brazenly and openly assaulting innocent unarmed civilians, maiming people. You saw that. Today there are many people, there are some people who can't walk. They have suffered lifetime deformities because of the brutalities meted to them by those MPP hoodlums. And you heard the confession of the man. He said he takes responsibility. The Elmi Short Commission found him liable for those atrocities and recommended that he should be reprimanded. Are you not worried that the president did not implement that recommendation? And instead of, in what country can a man like this man receive a promotion from Colonel to Brigadier General? In what country can a man like this man be rewarded after maiming people, brutalizing people, be rewarded with the position of general officer commanding of the central command? In what country? His mere appointment is a scandal because this is a man who should be facing sanctions and not be enjoying promotion. And as for evidence, these matters are based on credible intelligence we have picked. We know what we are talking about. Unfortunately, the MPP is in office, so they will not allow for a search to be conducted in the presence of the media at his residence. But the media, you have uh, um, um, reporters in Kumasi. If he has nothing to hide, he should open his doors today for you to go around his house and check if he has nothing to hide. But they are in power. The man has been rewarded. There are soldiers guarding his house 24 seven, holding arms, so you don't expect <laughs> that they are going to open their doors and say, come and take pictures. No, they won't do that. But we know what we are talking about. Our intelligence is rock solid. And his track record bears our sessions out. It's as simple as that. And if you doubt us, then the question is, of all the people in the military, how come that it is only this man who was found worthy of the position of general commanding officer for central command. And how come that this appointment was given to him in 2024? Why not Northern Command? Why, why Central? Why, why Ashanti region? You think it's a mere coincidence? Well, we don't think so. So Ghanaians are discerning. They can put one plus one together. They can make their own judgment. But as for us, we will continue to monitor them very, very keenly because we know and believe that the intelligence we have is rock solid. Yes. Right, my name is Ube. I report for my name is Ube. I report for J1 TV and Star FM. So beyond this press conference, one of the finals, are you going to formally write to the CES or the Ghana Police Service to conduct an investigation? Emphatically, yes. We will be petitioning the IGP because he's the chairman of the Election Security Tax Force. We will also be drawing the attention of the CDS to these developments officially because we are aware that he knows. But everybody is scared of the man because that is a Kufuado's darling boy.
but the CDS has a responsibility to Ghanaians to act. And so we will officially be petitioning his office. But not just that. Um, we are going to ensure that the king of the Ashanti people, who is very much interested in the peace of our nation and the peace of the processes leading to during and after the December 7th election, I'm talking about Utu Fosei to the second. We will officially draw his attention to these developments because the, head, the headquarters of the operation of this guy is Kumase. And I know that the Utu Four cherishes the peace that the people of Kumasi and Ashanti region enjoy. And he will want to take an interest into this matter and call this guy to order. But not just him, our external developmental partners will also be notified. And so the observers will be notified, the foreign missions will be notified. And we, we are so excited, we are so excited that the, United, the, the Secretary of State of um, the United States of America not too long ago issued um, a notice, a circular, that anybody who tries to undermine the peace and stability of Ghana or the sanctity of the 2024 December elections process in Ghana will face sanctions from the Americans. And um, if there is anybody that Brigadier General Obuku fears, it should be them because he likes to travel. He likes to travel a lot. And that is a topic for another day. So we will draw the attention to what he's doing. That is not to say that we will stop at that. No, we are going into the election with all the necessary precautions. Like Azuma Nelson, we are going with our referee in our pocket. And what we will do to make sure that they don't succeed is not a matter for public consumption. Let's continue. I believe this will be the last but one, right? So we'll take this and take the last one. Last but two. OK, let's be quick. Let's be quick with it. Where does intelligence come from, and at any point are you going to bring some evidence, at least to the CDS or some someone, uh, to back what sure. you are offering? Let, let's take the other question. My name is Habila Kekele, CFG. Aside calling on the various security agencies, what mechanism is the party putting in place to not only secure the ballot, but also ensure the protection of the electorate and encourage a high turnout? Thank you. Last one. I want to ask if I can take two feet. No, one. <laughs> my name is James Abedi. I was with you. I mind would debate a bit from this, but we've heard that the empty farming of the has withdrawn his bid as a, uh, an independent candidate. want to know if he has withdrawn to support your presidential and parliamentary candidate. Thank you. That goes without saying. <laughs> Saying someone has vowed is very serious, and to the fact that he has even moved his family outside the country, where did he make that vow to whom and when? All right, thank you. So, um, on Amenfi Central, I think you got your answer. Um, we are excited that the Member of Parliament for Amenfi Central has made that decision. Um, the, the interests of our party and the decisions of the party always hold supreme, and it's important that all members comply. And uh, so we, 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 the party is united in Amenfi Central behind the duly elected parliamentary candidate uh, of the party, uh, Madam Joanna, Mrs. Joanna Kujo. And uh, I, I believe that Honorable Kwachiaka fully supports um, President Mahama as well as the candidate for the NDC for the presidential election. So you have your answer. And there was a question about whether or not we intend to present any evidence to the CDS. Um, I believe that upon our petition being brought before the CDS and the IGP, um, there may be a call for further and better particulars. And at that level, we will share the details of our intel with them. These kind of in secu uh, security intelligence are not matters that you share on TV and radio. But when we meet them, when they give us that audience, um, we are happy to share that with them. Because we need to, in the public domain, at least protect our sources. So that is what I can say. And I think that same answer 
also applies to the last question we had as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is a summary of the press conference we did today. I'm going to do a brief translation in the Akan language, and I want to play with you to bear with us. Just keep your cameras and microphones in position. will be done in the next uh, five, seven minutes. But let me say this finally before we draw the curtains down on the English presentation. You all, as media men, have a role to play in this year's election. You are the fourth estate of the realm, and you should be interested in the peace and stability of Ghana, and in the sanctity, the credibility of the electoral process. You've seen this man. Once upon a time, 2019, Colonel Michael Lupuku, today Brigadier General Michael Lupuku. So you have a conscience and you have your own ethics of your profession. Ask yourself whether this man is fit to be the general officer commanding of the central command of the Ghana Armed Forces. Ask yourself if he is even fit to wear the uniform he's wearing today, given the atrocities he supervised against innocent civilians at Ayawaso West Wagon, and the recommendations of the short commission on sin. I believe that every reasonable man will agree with us that this man is a threat to the peace and stability of Ghana and a threat to peace, peaceful elections in Ghana. And he must be held accountable for the atrocities he has already committed at Ayawaso West Wagon and not rewarded with such a critical position. And so for us as a political party interested in having a credible election, a peaceful election, and like I said, our, our commitment to Ghana having a peaceful election is